world championships, Karsten Warholm. This guy is extremely dominant and extremely consistent when it comes to the highest stage. 2017, 2019, and now 2023. 46.89 seconds to get another gold medal. His third world championship gold medal, his fourth major championship gold medal if you include the Olympics. Karsten Warholm is really the consummate performer when we're talking about the 400 meter hurdles. It means, it means a lot. It means, it means everything to me, you know, this is, this is my life, this is every day. I try to make the right choices so that this day when it counts the most, I can be the best in the world in the 400 meter hurdles. And uh, after a tough year, last year, it feels nice to have the medal back where I feel like it belongs, even though there are seven other people that might disagree. Now, of course, I thought that he was on the path to break the world record. If we're talking about what he did through the season, running, what, 46.4? Um, he also ran, what, 46.5 or so? He also ran 47.0 in the semifinals of the 400-meter hurdles here. I mean, I thought he was very much on the path for the world record, but didn't hit it here, 46.89 seconds, significantly more conservative in terms of time than I think a lot of us probably expected. But again, Carson Warholm, he shows up and shows out. And what I love about him is he is always energized. He is always in it. He is always for going all out as best as possible. But also, it, and the, after the race, he spoke about how he has so much respect for his competitors and then he loves competing with all these guys. Yeah, it's been, it's been great rivalry, you know. I think I have a lot of respect for them and hopefully now <laughs> they are gaining some respect for me as well. Um, but I also think I've always been humble. I've never used big words. I never, you know, I have real confidence. I don't need to talk myself up. I know, I know what I'm capable of. And this humbleness also gives me that advantage because I sit back in the hotel I know that this gold medal is not something I can walk out and pick up. I know that there are great people there that wants this gold medal as well and that keeps me focused. And speaking of his competitors, second place, this might be an upset, Kyron McMaster, British Virgin Islands, 47.34 seconds. I think this is his third fastest performance of his entire career. He really pulled through to get on the podium here. His first podium, what, 2019, he got the fourth place. 2021, he got fourth place. 2017, he got DQ'd. 2022, at the World Championships, he didn't even make it into the final. Uh, this is a huge performance for Kyron McMaster to finally get on the podium, and he was excited excited he was crazy after the race he was super excited to finally get on the podium man i like a big smack hey me i even like it i don't even know how to act right now i ain't not, i ain't gonna sleep listen i am grateful the lord placed me i had so much faith in him this year i connected with him on a different level so today was just running blindly with faith executing my race plan sticking to my lane Shut out the blogs because you know the blogs are like the big three. Yeah. And like nobody else in metal content. You know what I mean? So I just shut that out, focus on myself, and came out here and do what I had to do. And man, if you've been watching, I had Kyron McMaster as one of my sleeper picks. I knew that he had the potential to get on the podium. I did think that Rye Benjamin was going to get silver and that Dos Santos was going to get bronze. But Rye Benjamin, unfortunately, the dreaded bronze medal. Now, he's been getting consistent silvers from 2019 to 21 to 22. But he unfortunately dropped back down to bronze medal here. 47.56 seconds. What's crazy is that you can argue Rye Benjamin was leading the race through, what, hurdle five or so? About halfway through the race but unfortunately that second half just didn't really show the consistency that we know him for didn't show that ability that you know that power that we know Rye Benjamin for came up for the bronze medal I mean you got to think about the consistency that he's been showing from again 2019 all the way to 2023 Rye Benjamin is always going to be in the mix it's just going to take some time for him to get over that hump and he's been dealing with some injuries but he was super super disappointed after the race but the competitor in me is just like man I just I want more for myself um, I want to prove everyone right that believes in me. Uh, I mean, that said, it, it has been a very tough season, uh, dealing with injury, a lot of changes, a lot of distractions, lost a close friend of mine. So it's just been tough, but I try not to make any excuses and I try to come out and do my best. And, man, I, I, it was, fitness is there, I just really don't know what happened to them. I feel very happy about the first half. I was right there. And um, I just couldn't piece together that last piece. I went, I think, 15s to 10 or something stupid like that. And just, yeah, I just didn't have it. It's crazy. I just, 
Yeah. So huge shout out to Warhol, McMaster, Rye Benjamin, fourth place, Roshan Clark from Jamaica. Now in the semifinals, he broke the Jamaican national record and the world junior record. Clark is, you know, on a war path for something really big when we're talking about the future of the 400 meter hurdles. His ability is really, really untested when we're talking about someone in this age range. And I think Clark has a very, very bright future to challenge for gold medals when we're talking about the future. Now, right now, Carson Warholm has the game on lock. Whether the race is fast, whether the race is slow, whatever it is, Warholm is going to be holding things down. But don't sleep on Clark when we're talking about the future. Dos Santos coming back from injury, coming back from surgery. He only ran two races throughout the entire season of 400 and of 400 meter hurdles, but he only came up fourth, fifth place, 48.10 seconds. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, not seeing you know him really get on the podium is really tough but I think these guys Dos Santos he's gonna be back Trevor Bassett got sixth place his second world championship final but we're gonna see a lot of these guys really step things up again but Warholm, this is the guy right he's been the most dominant guy over the past you know whoever however many years since 2017 and he is really putting things down so Warholm loving his performances here in the 400 meter hurdles again I thought it was gonna take a world record but you know it is what it is you always love to see it 400 meter dash women's 400 this was an exciting race regardless of who was in it right we didn't see Sydney McLaughlin Ravoni we didn't see Britton Wilson we didn't see Sawi Na listen Marley Di Paulino gold medal her first gold medal like she had gotten silver in 2021 silver in 2022 gold medal here in a personal best of 48.76 seconds Huge personal best for her, improving on that 48.98 seconds that she had run at the LA Grand Prix earlier this year. Listen, Paulino is the consummate performer. I love saying consummate performer because we're talking about people who are super consistent year after year after year. This was the first year that Shawnee Miller-Weibo was not competing in the 400. She, of course, ran in the heats. Huge shout out to her after giving birth. But Paulino was like, yo, Miller-Weibo's not here. She beat me the last two times. I'm going for this gold medal, and she delivered. Now listen, I know a lot of people are going to say if Sydney McLaughlin or Roni was here, then she would have won gold, and Paulino would, listen, that didn't happen, right? At the end of the day, she has to compete with who shows up, and Paulino showed up. In my opinion, I think Paulino would have stepped up her game and been able to really fight for the gold, if not still get the gold. I told y'all that I had Paulino as my favorite, regardless of who was in this race. She pulled off the gold medal here and in a personal best. Huge shout out to Paulino and what she was able to do. Silver medal, Natalia Kazmarek from Poland. Now, she's been having so many doubts over the past couple years because she wasn't able to make finals. She wasn't able to perform when it counts. When we're talking about world championships, Olympics, right? Uh, European, she has done well there, but she came up for the silver medal. She had to fight for it against Sade Williams, but 49.57 seconds for Natalia Kazmarek from Poland. Sade Williams fought in that last home straight and almost got the silver, but 49.60. Both of them leaned at the line, and Sade said that she didn't even know. She just looked over and she was like, oh, I saw I was close with Kazmarek. But I was just thinking, oh, I have to make it on the podium. I have to make it on the podium because I just, I just wanted to medal again. Even if I didn't run, even if I didn't run as fast or faster than the semi, I at least wanted to make it on the podium. As I said, my past interview, let's get this money. I, I saw um, the, Natalia um, next to me. And it looked like we were like very close, so I tried to dip. I realized that I don't really dip. <laughs> so I tried to dip, and I was really hoping for the silver medal. But like I said, um, I made it on the podium again, so I'm happy, but satisfied. I'm happy, I'm not satisfied, I'm happy. She pulled through and got the bronze medal. Shadi Williams, second bronze medal, consecutive World Championships 2022, World Championships in 2023. And she was super close to her personal best. She ran her personal best of 49.5 in the semifinals. And now here, 49.60 in the final. Again, Paulino for gold, Kazmarek silver, and then Shadi Williams for bronze. Love the performances from these women. Rashida Adeleke was super, super close. She came up, you know, was coming up in the second half of the race and she was going for it. But her first World Championship final, you're talking about getting fourth place, 50 0.13 seconds after a long season. Remember, don't forget that Adeleke actually broke the NCAA record for like an hour or so before Talitha Diggs did it. And then of course, before Britton Wilson did. But I think Adeleke is going to be the future of the 400 meters, you know, with a lot of these other women, but she's going to have a very bright future. Just continue to give my all, all the time. And hopefully next year I'll be able to kind of gear my season towards the Olympics and not have such a long season like with the NCAA. And that's just the main goal, to stay healthy, to keep continuing enjoying it. You know, I went out there today, I had so much fun with the whole experience. Like, no, it's not very often that you get into a world final, so I just want to take all of my stride and 
enjoy the experience. And then Cynthia Bolingo from Belgium, she managed to come up for fifth place, 50.33 seconds. Again, go back to the, uh, what, the comment section or go back to the community tab that I have and I did a whole bracket. I put her on the, in the Sweet 16 and she was voted out in the first round, but she managed to come up for fifth place place here that is kind of insane when you're talking about someone who really wasn't considered you know being in the mix but huge shout out to Bolingo and then of course Linky Claver she went out like a shot right she went out guns blazing from the first you know 200 and you know she started to fade unfortunately but Linky Claver came up for sixth place you know didn't it wasn't her day but a lot of these women huge shout out to them again Marley de Paulino she has a lot more to go. Do not sleep on what she's going to be capable of when we get to the Olympics next year. Now, Cindy McLaughlin Roney, she may, I think she's probably going to do the 400 meter hurdles, but Britton Wilson's going to get healthy. Shawnee Miller Weibo, she might do the triple. Listen, these women are going to be in it, but I really love Paulino and the amazing performance she was able to throw down here, regardless of who was in the field. Now, on the flip side, I do want to talk about a couple of the prelims. In the 200 meter dash, we did see the women's prelims. Everyone got through. I mean, Shakira Richardson looks good. Sharika Jackson looks good. Gabby Thomas looks good. This is going to be a very, very good 200 meters when we're getting into the semifinals as well as the finals, you know, uh, throughout the next couple days. If you look at the semifinals again, you have Sharika Jackson, Shakira Richardson, and Marie Jose Talou in another semifinal together. This same thing just happened in the 100 meter dash, and now we're seeing it again in the 200. Now, of course, we know that, you know, uh, Sharika Jackson and Shakira Richardson are probably significantly better than Talou in the 200, but shout out to Talou and she was able to come through and you know really pick herself back up to come out and you know look comfortable in the 200 as well so very much looking forward to the 200 meters but men's side I think everyone very comfortably got through from Noah Lyles to Kenny B to Arian Knighton to even Andrew Hudson right he finished just behind uh, Noah Lyles in his heat but these guys are moving through and I think it's you know pretty comfortable uh, to Bogo Zarno Hughes Zarno Hughes ran sub 20 seconds in his heat he looked comfortable man I'm gonna be honest, I don't know who to pick for this 200 meters anymore. I had the USA as a sweep, Lyles, Knighton, and then Benaric, but uh, Tobogo looked good. And Hughes looked good. Listen, I don't know, we gonna see, but Lyles is getting that gold medal. In my opinion, Lyles is, no one's taking that gold medal away from him. He's really hyped. So we're gonna see what happens in that. Women's 100 meter hurdles. Now, it wasn't super fast in terms of the semifinals, but we did see some great, great women get through. Nia Ali, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, Kenny Harrison, Toby Amusan, Daniel Williams, uh, uh, what, Devin Charlton, right? All these women were able to get through. I think the biggest casualties will probably be uh, Megan Tapper. So she unfortunately didn't qualify on time. She was the first non-qualifier out, despite running a faster time than uh, one of the uh, semifinals. So she unfortunately doesn't make it in. You know, I think this is the second championships in a row she didn't make it right olympic bronze medalist for tapper but fortunately didn't get in but akira nuji also from jamaica she was able to get into the final her first world championship final after coming off a legendary season at the university of arkansas unfortunately though masai russell from the united states she hit a hurdle coming down in her semifinal and was unable to qualify now this is her first world championship, so we're going to see a lot more from her. I think Masai Russell and Akira Nugent are going to have some very, very bright futures. For Akira Nugent, it might start tomorrow. So we're going to see what goes down with the women's 100 meter hurdles. It's going to be fast. It's very much going to be fast. But for the most part, those are some of the top competitions that we did see. The women's triple jump had their qualifying, so we're going to see them competing tomorrow as well. But long jump on the men's side, what Wayne Pinnock, Wayne Pinnock really took off in that men's long jump. He threw down a huge, huge marker. He's talking about what, um, 8.54 meters for a world lead for, I mean, Wayne Pinnock is dangerous from Jamaica. He's dangerous. So amazing performance for him. We're going to see all these jumpers as we, you know, close out the championships over the next couple days. But let me know if anything surprised you from day five of these world championships, right? Did you expect a world record in the 400 meter hurdles? Like I'm mean, definitely, I did, right? Did you expect some different outcome in the 400 meters for the women's side? I mean, listen, amazing performances across the board and a lot more to go. So let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.